Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Ridwanullah family. Welcome back to another episode of Ridwanullah TV show. I'm your host and maximizer, Hussein Mahmoud, working to help you completely maximize your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, all praise and thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, owner, and sustainer, the one who's worthy of all worship without any associates or intermediaries. And may the peace and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon the most esteemed leader and most honorable teacher, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions, and those who follow him until the day of judgment. Allahumma ameen. Um, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, um, in today's episode, which will be the fourth and final Ramadan series, um, and it's going to be completing Ramadan and celebration plus more, bithanillahi ta'ala. So we're going to be talking about completing Ramadan and celebration plus more, bithanillahi ta'ala. Once again, it's important for us to realize and understand we need to complete Ramadan and celebrate bithanillahi ta'ala plus more bithanillahi ta'ala so that is what the topic will be about uh, bithanillahi ta'ala and i know in the last episode i had a lot of things to get off my chest um, particularly for the viewers as well uh, so this one we're going to get back to schedule bithanillahi ta'ala um, so that's what the topic is going to be about um, you know there's a lot of very very important things that i wanted to be able to share with you on this episode um, that, you know, obviously the duration and the, the values and the duration and the details, right? So the more you're listening, the longer you're listening, the, the, the more you pay attention, the more value you're able to extract from something. That's why I keep listening to something over and over again for a duration of time. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I consume content on multiple levels for hours throughout the day. Honestly, I feel like I'm probably learning and growing at least five to ten hours out of the day. Um, the other time, I'm you know doing other things. Alhamdulillah, rabbil alamin. So we really have to keep that in mind. So getting to the sponsors' announcements and updates, um, I'll be happy to get into the to that subject. Uh, but right now, sponsors' uh, announcements and updates. Um, uh, we only have one default sponsor, and then we'll be adding other sponsors. To the mix, bithanillahi ta'ala, obviously by now we should know, um, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, um, our default sponsor is uh, Radwanullah Organization. Um, Radwanullah Organization is um, a for-profit and non-profit um, uh, Islamic personal professional development organization that is designed to help you completely maximize your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the first part is the media where we deliver so much content. Um, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen through Ridwanullah TV and so many other uh, different outlets. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Um, the second part of it is the Ridwanullah University, which is an Islamic personal professional development uh, program. Um, and then the third, just to kind of keep myself on track, the third part of it is the Radwanullah Coaching and Consulting, where we work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis, uh, individuals and groups on a one-on-one -on -one basis, as well as through the teaching and training. Uh, we work with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis um, to help them completely maximize their life and, any, and anything else within that, as well as the businesses and organizations. Um, and then... Uh, uh, after the coaching and consulting, um, there's the Radwanullah uh, uh, authors and uh, spe speaking. What is it? Authoring and speaking. So that's where we, we write books and things like that and, and do the speaking engagements, bithanillahi ta'ala. Um, and last but not least, the Radwanullah Foundation, where we do community service and foundational work. Um, and so that's number five. Number six is the Radwanullah retreats. Um, that's when we're going to do quarterly retreats 
where we go to a, sp a specific location to help you completely maximize your life as well. And then uh, number seven is the Radwanullah uh, conference that's coming up in the future. I don't know when that will happen, uh, but you guys will be the first to know through uh, the Radwanullah TV. Ta'ala. Um, and then uh, there's the Ridwanullah store, um, and then Ridwanullah ideas, and then Ridwanullah to be determined. So there's 10 elements that I would say right now that the Ridwanullah organization is primarily built on. Um, and as the time goes on, you guys will be seeing a lot more of this. As of right now, it's primarily on idea stage, and some of it is on execution, execution stage. So keep your eyes out for that and show your love and support. I would really, really love your love and support. Um, so um, that would be the sponsor, Ridwanullah Organization. If you are a potential sponsor, uh, please send your information to Ridwanullah. You send your budget and details to Ridwanullah Organization at gmail.com. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, what else? What else? Um, so moving on to the announcements and updates. Um, I don't have too many announcements and updates. Um, the only thing that I can think about right now is um, the Ridwanullah University uh, is, is in development. Um, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, it'll be an online monthly membership program, uh, which is an Islamic personal and professional development based program that is designed to help you completely maximize your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace will and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're going to be coming up with um, different programs as well um, and and every month we're going to be focused on one particular topic uh, we're going to dive deeper in through, into it throughout the month and you know we're going to be coaching consulting you guys in the program um, so in the beginning of the month, we're going to start a new topic. Halfway through the month, we're going to do a coaching consulting call and then keep repeating that cycle. And then towards the end of it, obviously, just get get ready um, and, and continue that process. Um, you know, there are specific lessons planned and prepared, probably 40 to 60 percent. And then the other 40 to 60 percent is going to be input from the Radwanullah uh, members, uh, the Ridwanullah University members, be the Nilahi Taala. Whatever you guys want to talk about, anything that's bugging you that you guys would like me to address completely on a monthly basis. So it's going to be, uh, you know, we're we're going to be working together to build the best Islamic personal professional development program online. Um, anywhere between thirty to sixty dollars uh, per month, uh, be the Nilahi Taala to get premium. Uh, teaching and training content, as well as coaching and consulting uh, from me directly, as well as any of the individuals that I'll be working with. So that's going to be important for you, for us to take advantage of these different elements that are going on and happening. Uh, um, you know, and if the free content is, is good enough for you, then, then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Uh, but the paid membership programs and all of the other programs that I'm doing will primarily be for those who are serious, that are the maximizers, not the dabblers. Um, the dabblers are just people who tend to do this and that here and there. The maximizers are those who uh, are not only masters, but also maximize things. So um, that's what's coming up, Bidinillahi Ta'ala. Those are just announcements and updates that I wanted to let you guys know. I would love to focus on uh, doing the quarterly retreats, but I understand it was out of my budget, maybe to a large degree on, my, on myself as well. And I know it's a lot of, it's a lot, it's out of budget for a lot of people. So uh, we're going to take steps to be able to build ourselves to be able to afford that, Bidinillahi Ta'ala. So 30 to $60, at least 30 to $60 per month. Um, it's not going to be, you know, a budget breaker to get extremely valuable content. Uh, so I would love your love and support. Keep an eye out for that. Very, very exciting information and news to, to, to come on that as well. And as I continue to build, uh, you guys will see a lot more things developing and growing. Uh, so that's what I wanted to announce and update you guys on. 
um, and maybe I'll start covering some of the topics that I've that, that I wanted to cover from the last uh, episode on uh, taking advantage of the last ten days, and what we're going to be focused on is completing Ramadan and celebrating and moving forward plus more. So to 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 start getting into the topic, I'm really really excited. So let me take a sip. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hydration, hydration, extremely important. Alhamdulillah. Alright, so getting into the topic, completing Ramadan, celebrating and moving forward. Bidhanillahi ta'ala. I think a lot of us, uh, a part of being proactive is to consider things before they happen. So that's the amazing thing of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed me to do through my uh, Radwanullah TV uh, show and all the other content that are coming up is that I'm able to kind of consider these things in advance by you know planning and preparing for it in advance and just kind of pondering it as well throughout the process and actually presenting it to you guys and after I present I learn so much and even after that I get to you know start doing better and, and learning and developing and growing right and that's a part of being proactive with your life. Um, and one thing that I've realized is a lot of us are reactive, right? We don't even consider completing Ramadan, um, celebrating Eid, and moving forward until we are in that pred predicament, or maybe even after, depending on how delayed you are in, in your reactive reality. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So it's important for us to ponder things, right? Get ready, be proactive. Um, and I hope that this is a part of that reality where we are pondering things and we are getting ready and we are improving and growing and developing. So this is a wonderful opportunity to think about completing Ramadan, celebrating Eid and moving forward throughout the, with the rest of the year and beyond. So... What I, want, what I want us to think about is, what is completing Ramadan? What is celebrating Eid? And what is moving forward? So that's just, when, whenever you, you, you come across a particular event in your life, a lot of the people, they don't take time to completely look at, to complete that. They don't take time to celebrate their successes as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Sunnah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala clearly letting us know that we need to celebrate uh, our successes and, and, and ponder our, uh, uh, our 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 failures. Is that we have to look at this from a perspective that it's it's an ongoing cycle. Everything that we do, we have to celebrate. We have to complete, celebrate, and move forward. Right, and. And that goes on with everything in life. Like, um, when I'm done with this episode, I'm going to complete it. I'm going to celebrate and move forward. So that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do with Ramadan. He wants us to complete it. And He wants us to celebrate Eid. And He wants us to move forward in a positive and progressive and proactive way. Following the footsteps of our Beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So that is what we have to consider That is what we have to look at um, And you know when, when it, com Completion is something that we really have to Look into and really have to assess and ponder And sometimes sadly some, some, of the, some of the information that I'm sharing with you Including myself I should say sadly for all of us We're, co we're considering it for the first time We're considering it um, as, a, as an initial thing And maybe we've considered it before But we are reactive Meaning we're only considering it when it's too late For the most part 
So we really have to ponder this in advance. And, you know, some of the reasons why I feel like it's important to complete something, celebrate, and then move forward is that you don't want to keep repeating the same mistakes, right? You don't want to, you know, keep repeating the same reactive mistakes, right? If, if, if you didn't complete Ramadan successfully, why are you going to keep repeating the same mistakes? If you, if, if you, if you celebrated Eid with the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why would you want to keep repeating those mistakes? If you are not moving forward in a positive and progressive way, why would you want to keep repeating the same mistakes? So it's important for us to consider this before we move forward into it, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. And the other reason why it's so important is to build on these good habits that we're building throughout Ramadan and throughout life. Um, so during Ramadan, it's important to let go of these negative habits and to build positive and progressive and proactive habits. And once we're building these positive, progressive and proactive habits, we really have to be even Allah Ta'ala, make sure that we're moving forward with it, right? We're not just building habits to move forward from it, moving forward with it, be even Allah Ta'ala. And I think that's a very important distinction that um, a lot of us are not really considering, right? Sometimes we work so hard to build something and not to utilize it moving forward. We, we, we destroy it by sins and transgressions and disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in so many ways. So we really have to understand why that is important. And the other thing is, you know, just being able to benefit from other things in the future, right? When you take advantage and you complete your Ramadan and make sure that you are celebrating Eid properly, not disobediently, sadly, as a lot of people are doing, um, and you move forward in the proper way, you're able to not only have good habits now, you'll have good habits that'll serve you in the future when things come about. It's about getting, it's about staying ready, not always getting ready. Stay ready. And if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Be then illahi ta'ala. So, um, and I thought about uh, those are the important reasons why we should consider completing Ramadan, uh, celebrating Eid properly, and, um, and moving forward in a positive and progressive way. And I remember the first time I was introduced, like I, I, I grew up uh, in the States around, uh, I remember a little bit of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, around 97 to 2000 ish, uh, from 2000 ish to 2003, uh, yeah, 97, like about 2003, 4, I was in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and I first came to Salt Lake City, Utah when I first came to America, and then went to those two states, and then came back to Salt Lake City, Utah in about 2013, no, 2003. I'm here until now, Alhamdulillah, and the reason why I'm telling you this is just to tell you I was in Minnesota for the first time. I think it was for a wedding. I can't remember exactly. Uh, and I was there, I think it was during Ramadan as well. I, I don't exactly remember the exact equation. Maybe I'm getting things mixed up. It was a long, long time ago. Um, and I'm not used to the craziness in these small cities that I've been through. And maybe they're not small anymore. Uh, but when I was there at, at that, those particular times, uh, they were fairly small. So I wasn't introduced to this concept of Eid party, Eid party. I don't know if I was too young and whatnot, but it was just crazy to me. I, I, I was in Minnesota for the first time uh, visiting uh, some family friends. Um, and, and I was just around and I'm thinking like, there's Eid party. I couldn't, I couldn't get over that. Like, and I was, and, and I'm not talking about like, like halal party. I'm not talking about like, I'm talking about the get down, get down parties. Like, I'm talking about, subhanallah, like, you know, not the Eid celebration, right? You know, where people, family members and kids come around. I'm talking about where people do the dirty, dirty, subhanallah. And I was just, my mind was like, Eid party like 
it, it became like oil in my mind. Like it just couldn't mesh together. Eid, party. And I knew people were, you know, dressing, uh, you know, according to the, to the, to the, to the culture, the, not the Islamic culture, but the hip hop culture, the R&B culture, the, the Mufsideen culture, the, 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 the transgressor, the, the transgressing culture. Uh, and that has become so popular. Um, they dress like that, they party like that, they drink like that, they smoke like that, they shoot like that, they snort like that. And I didn't know it was that bad at that time. But now realizing the reality of how far we have come uh, is just crazy to me. I don't know if anybody knows, uh, you know, in, in their adulthood, if this is as crazy as it's been. But maybe I was just a child and I wasn't really aware of all these things. And I just couldn't c overcome this reality that there was a lead party, like that type of party, right? Where there's the drugging, the, 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 the music, and all this filth. Um, that that is in these realities that we all find ourselves in. So when I when I was looking into that, I started to think about it. Like, man, how can those two things go together? How can you invest so much time, money, energy, effort, focus in all of these different elements that is required for you to achieve any of your goals and dreams? And then most importantly, your sacred goals and dreams before your secular goals and dreams. And more importantly, your obligated goals and sacred goals and dreams rather than anything else. How can you invest all of that only to throw it away? It is as if to me, and the reason why I'm telling you this is, I know there's still people that do that. And I hope somebody that is watching this knows somebody that is still doing that. Or somebody that is still doing that is watching this. Um, so that it could be a reminder for myself and you and everybody else and to, to, to teach, to tell these individuals, to warn these individuals, to stop the sinning and transgressing, transgressing against, against the boundaries, rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be then illahi ta'ala as we all should in one way or the other. Um, and, and it's kind of like to me, someone who, who has a goal to make $10,000, to save $10,000. And they work night and day, day and night, busting their you-know-what, and working and working and working and working to whatever capacity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them. And when they make that money, just saying, this was nice, dumping it into the water, or just throwing it away or giving it away or whatever, without the intention of giving it away, just throwing it, right? How, how does that make sense? That is what you guys are doing, whoever is partying during Eid. I'm talking about, I'm not talking about halal party. We could party in a halal way, right? In, in the way that we're celebrating and doing things properly within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you're getting turned up, right? Let me not use the lingo because I know about that stuff. If you're, not, if you're getting turned up, if you're, you're like getting lit, right? Whatever else you guys use nowadays, I don't even know what, what they use right now. Getting turned up, getting lit, um, too much sauce. That's one of my other friends was saying. He's out of date, so I can't really trust that source. <laughs> um, get all of this crazy stuff that you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. If you don't, great, keep it that way. If you do, you know what I'm talking about. Getting turned up, getting lit, and doing the stanky leg and all of that. All of that just needs to go to the corner. Doing all of that is like throwing your good deeds away for whatever little that you've accumulated throughout. And then taking all the penalties, taking on debt, taking on debt, right? Taking on $10,000 of debt, if not more. That is what it's like. It's just crazy. It doesn't make sense. You have to be able to make sense out of this reality and be able to make sure that we are headed in a positive direction, that we are moving in a positive way, that we are concluding our Ramadan in the best way possible, that we are celebrating our Eid in the best possible ways, and we are moving forward in the best way possible. ta'ala. So one of the things that I will say is, this is just a scary, scary thought that came in my mind right now, is that the way you complete 
celebrate and move forward from things is an indication on how you're going to complete, celebrate and move forward in your life. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. That is extremely scary. That is scary to me at the very least. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. The way you complete, celebrate and move forward from events in your life is the exact same way you're going to be concluding, moving, celebrating and moving forward with your life into the hereafter. Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. That's just amazing to me. And I didn't think about that until now. I didn't realize that until now. I had s small senses of it, but you know, the more you teach, the more you learn. The more you give, the more you get. The more you become, the more you, you, you inspire and motivate others to do the same and if not better. And the more you do, the more you achieve. The more you do and give, the more you receive. Bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. So I hope that I'm giving as much as I can within that same token. Understand the way you complete anything in your life and celebrate anything in your life and move forward from anything in your life is the exact same way you're going to be concluding your actual life in this dunya into the hereafter, the everlasting life where there is no return, there is no correction, there is no as yawmul hisab, darul a'mal is the days of action, the way the days of action is in this dunya, and the days of account is in the akhira. The days of action is in this dunya, the days of account is in the akhira. So you might as well account for yourself before you are accounted for, as our as our as as, as Umar ibn al Khattab radiallahu anhu informed us of. ta'ala. So keep that in mind, bithinillahi ta'ala. How you conclude and summarize and conclude things is important. And that is why, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with the Radwanullah quarterly retreats. Because I don't go throughout every quarter and every, everything within those quarters without concluding, celebrating, and moving forward. And I do that on a quarterly basis. And I hope that you guys can join us in these quarterly retreats. Uh, so it's going to be very, 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 very important to at the very least take whatever information, whatever knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is disseminating through me to be able to acknowledge and understand the facts of these realities and the fact that Ramadan is so, so important and it's, it's one of the most, if not the most important months if not the most important month, one of the most important months of the year. So the way you can complete that, the way you celebrate that, the way you move forward from that is an indication of every other area of your life, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. So it's important for us to continue to remember that. It's important for especially the leaders, the, the moms and the dads, uh, and, and the grandparents and the, grandfa the, the, the grandparents, the grandmothers and the grandfathers and the great grandparents and anybody else who's alive and anybody else who's in pos leadership positions to not just move forward from things, complete it first, celebrate it second, and then move forward third. So that's what the routine has to be, not only for us, for everybody. And right now I'm actually trying to inspire and motivate myself to figure out how to maneuver and manage these messages directly towards individuals that are watching this, individuals who are listening to this. Um, and inshallah, right now we're not at the, level of the, at the level that we want. We don't have the proper equipment and everything. Um, and I'm not worried about that right now, and even though I'm thinking about it, um, it's going to be a situation where we're going to have a website, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala, where a lot, all of this media and content will be posted primarily on that website and then disseminated through the social medias, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. And you guys will be able to listen to the podcast. Um, if, you, if you know how to extract the audio from this, like, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, I know, um, and I know you know, and you can know if you do that research, uh, you'll be able to extract the audio from this video and listen to it as, in, as a podcast for yourself 
and we're going to try to make that a little bit easier in the future but right now uh, we don't have that capacity ta'ala. so it's important to just keep that in mind um, and I'm trying to figure out um, um, the best way some of the pressure points some of the pain points um, I know uh, you know the, 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 the overwhelm is going to be a pressure point um, when, when you're summarizing and concluding, don't be overwhelmed by the reality that you haven't done it, you haven't, you're not enough, you haven't done enough, you haven't given enough, you haven't received enough, um, and, you know, or you're not worthy enough. And it's, it's important for us to consider, to con continuously ponder that and look at those different elements. So we've, we understood some of the reasons why we should not. We should complete it properly. We should celebrate Eid properly and move forward properly. So right now we're going to transition into the how, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So some of the thoughts that are originally coming up in my head um, on, on, I've already mentioned a lot of it, but right now I'm going to give you a couple of things that we should be able to do, uh, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, to, to complete Ramadan properly. To, complete, to, to celebrate Eid properly, to move forward in the proper way, not only during Ramadan, but every single area of our lives, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, and eventually our life, uh, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. But before that, let me just get a quick sip, um, and we can move forward, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Whew, okay. All right, back at it. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil um, So one of the things that, so you, you're, you might be asking yourself, you might realize, let's say, let's say you've, you, you're part of the individuals who've realized each time at the end of it, there's, you're full of regret and you really haven't taken advantage of this opportunity. You really haven't um, achieved the level of success that you wanted to achieve. Maybe it's on a weekly basis. And let's say you are a part of the individuals who've come to that conclusion that you need to figure out how to complete things better, how to celebrate better, and how to move forward better, specifically during Ramadan and, and other areas of your life, if you would like. And you're asking yourself, how can I avoid regret? How can I avoid pain? How can I avoid doing the wrong things to summarize, to complete Ramadan, to celebrate Eid and to move forward. The, some of the things that I will tell you is, number one, is look at the other episodes that we've already recorded in this Radwanullah uh, Ramadan series, right? And make sure that you're planning and preparing properly. Make sure that you're ready, right, within that plan. Make sure that you're ready, meaning you're planning and preparing properly. And make sure that you're scheduling things. Um, and make sure, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, that you schedule, as I mentioned, I think I already mentioned that. I'm kind of losing it here today. Um. <laughs> All right, so, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So, once you get ready, meaning plan and prepare pro properly, and you're scheduling, and you're taking advantage as, as, as best and as much as you can, some of the things that I forgot to let you guys know is, don't be so consumed by getting your Eid clothes, right? Uh, meaning, make sure at the very, at the very least, in the first 10, first 20 days of Ramadan, make sure throughout, in between, in the meantime and in between time, you have all of your Eid clothes ready. That's number one. So you're not overly focused on, sadly, some people are more, more focused on uh, their clothes and what they want to do, and and all the the, the 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 material things, the external stuff, rather than the internal stuff. So it's important for us to have our clothes ready before Eid begins, right? And even more importantly, is to have your Eid ready, Eid clothes ready before Ramadan even begins, like even a month or two or so. You know, make sure that you have your two clothes for the Eids ready, right? And make sure that you, if you can afford it, buy, buy new. If you can't afford it, buy used. If you can't afford that, clean it. 
بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى So that's been an ongoing uh, uh, thing for me that I've been thinking about is that uh, Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen in the beginning that's just a, I was in that reactive mode where all I was doing is just getting my uh, clothes um, at the end of the um, at the end of the uh, Ramadan which, would, which actually c- was in conflict with the last 10 nights of Ramadan which conflicted with the odd nights as well so in order to avoid that mess in order to avoid that chaos in order to avoid all of those things that are happening within the capacity that is it is happening for you and for me we really have to have our clothes ready for for i don't know about women but for men make sure you have your kameez your 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 kameez ready your underpants ready your shirt underwear uh socks shoes hats imama jackets watches chains <laughs> I was by intention don't get chains whoever's wearing chain make sure that you, you know that is not a part of our deen um, I don't know why I threw that in there maybe somebody that's wearing a chain that's a Muslim is, is watching this um, but <laughs> um, I hope that that strikes some chord with somebody somewhere somehow some way bi'idhinillahi ta'ala so just making sure that your, your materialistic stuff is ready so you're not preoccupied with that and that is diverting you from your internal realities and that, that's what you really have to plan and prepare. Bidhanillahi um, ta'ala. Again, the other thing is make sure that you're giving your zakat al-fitr. Bidhanillahi ta'ala. Make sure that you have that ready. Um, make sure that I know towards the end of it there's I haven't I don't know maybe it's just me just being a little bit more conscious nowadays than I was when I was younger I'm seeing the 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 khatm al-Quran the the completion of the Quran being eventified like celebrated almost which to a certain degree it's not a bad thing but when you are making it a full-blown event and that might become a holiday in its own then that's not a part of our deen. So being aware of that is important as well, making sure that um, uh, um, that you know we, we, we stick to the Quran and the Sunnah as well as getting ready for it. Um, so making sure that you, you include the, 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 the Khatm al-Qur'ans in each of these messages, especially if you're in a leadership position, um, you'll be invited to these different gatherings and functions. Um, and, you know, just make sure that you're ready for that as well. Uh, what else? I'm almost drawing blanks now. Um, the other thing that I would say that is, is really, really important for us to consider when planning and preparing is the forgiveness part is, is extremely important. And, and that's something that I struggle with a lot, uh, seeking forgiveness and forgiving others. Uh, seeking forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking our own forgiveness and forgiving ourselves, seeking the forgiveness of others and forgiving them, uh, ta'ala, because uh, what happens is when you're in these particular situations, <clears throat> you, you, the, the hatred and all of these negative things that we have inside of us for other people um, is, is, is going to be diverting us from putting our, our, our money, our time, focus, uh, energy and effort into completing Ramadan properly and then celebrating Eid properly and moving forward properly. So that's another thing that I would add. I'm just trying to think about what else would be important for us to, to kind of think about and ponder um, in this process. And if I, if, I, if I conclude this, then I'll just kind of go on to the other things that are coming up in my mind and sharing with you some insights and breakthroughs that I've had uh, throughout the time. Um, uh, um, what else, what else, what else, what else, what else? Um, just be aware of uh, jealousy and envy. Um, and I know a lot of people, um, you know, tend to look at what other people have in this time, um, you know, especially when it's during the Eid day. Um, and when you're shopping, don't worry about whether this person is getting that or that person is getting this. Look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you. And, and look at what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to other people that are less fortunate. 
and move forward from there, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala. Um, and, you know, just seeing... Uh, another thing that I've realized is be aware of uh, realizing if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has accepted your Ramadan or not. And I remember from a long time ago whether I was given a talk or whether I was creating content by then. I can't remember, but I remember uh, the, the way that we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted our Ramadan or not and has forgiven us or not is have we completely given up the bad deeds, right, moving forward? Or are we still continuing these bad habits, I should say, and deeds? Are we continuing these bad deeds and habits? Um, if you have... if if, the, if your bad deeds have decreased or you have completely given them up, then that means that you are actually, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala, have been forgiven by them. Because you're, you're, not, you're no longer shackled to these bad deeds and habits. Now, how do you know if your good deeds are accepted is pretty much the same thing as well. Have you developed good deeds, number one, and, and, and habits? And if you have... Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowing you to continue those good deeds and habits moving forward? If you've stopped it, that means that it's a reality that you really have to revisit. And I, I can't really say that it is, not, it is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not accept it. But if you are allowed to move forward with those good deeds and to continue doing those good deeds and habits, that is a sign that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has accepted your good deeds because you are allowed to continue to benefit from that, right? So it's important to realize that. And I think when I look at the bigger picture, that's one of the most important elements on completing Ramadan, celebrating Eid, uh, and moving forward, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala. So that's an, that, that is a part of the reality that we really have to keep in mind, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala, and re recognize and realize, you know, did, did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Ramadan, or did He not accept it? And are we, ha have we given up our bad deeds and habits, and have we picked up and continue to move forward with good deeds and habits, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala? So that's pretty much the, 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 the things that I wanted to share with you um, in terms of completing Ramadan, celebrating Eid, and um, uh, you know, moving forward, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala. Uh, one of the things that are, is coming up in my mind right now about um, the, the Eid celebration is the makeup. My God! And I don't mean my God in a good way. I mean my God. Like That's just... Subhanallah, it's just crazy to me, and I'm not shaming anybody, and if it is shaming to you, then you should be ashamed of it in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in front of me or anybody else. The makeup sisters, subhanallah, can you guys just notch it down a little bit and stop mixing with the men? And I know some of it is designed in a way, but you know, find your own corners and the brothers, find your own corners. And I know the, the high schoolers and the college students and those who are young and, and single, ready to mingle, they don't care about that. They want to see who's fly and who's not and whose numbers they can get during Eid. That's, a no, that's the wrong way of doing it. Um, if you are man enough to approach a sister, you'll, you'll be man enough to approach if you're not man enough to approach her father, you're not man enough to approach her. So don't even try. So I'm just going to let you guys know those are my general thoughts um, of Eid. Bidhinillahi ta'ala. You know, make sure that you're wearing appropriate clothes. Some of the sisters are just wearing, like, the, I don't even know whether to call them high heels or hydraulics. They're just, like, just too high. Like, it just doesn't make sense. And, 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 and the, the clothes and everything else. So just, just be aware, please. Please be aware. Just please be aware. Um, you know, don't, don't be a fitna uh, for yourself and others and, 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 and move forward in a positive, progressive way. And for the brothers, you're not excused from it. Uh, make sure that you're wearing your pants in the right way. 
Uh, make sure that you're not, you know, mingling with the sisters. Um, make sure you keep your makeup makeup off as well. Bidinillahi ta'ala. Some of the brothers, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I hope there ain't no brother, Muslim brothers that are wearing makeup. Because I know there are some non-Muslim, subhanAllah. Anyway, um, you know, make sure that you complete your Ramadan strong, you celebrate your Eid properly, and you move forward in a positive and progressive way. And make sure that you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted or did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not. Um, and, and just move forward. And I think uh, by the time you're wa this is released and you're watching this initially, uh, next week is Ramadan. Uh, so keep that in mind. SubhanAllah, it's just mind-blowing to me right now. Next week is Ramadan and you've been reactively stumbling and mumbling and stumbling into Ramadan. You need to be proactive. You need to set your mindset right. Watch these series, bi'ithinillahi ta'ala, and move forward in the proper way, bi'ithinillahi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to reach Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to take advantage of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be planned and prepared for Ramadan. Um, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to benefit from the, the, the realities that we have been blessed with, the advantages that we have been given, the opportunities that we have been blessed with. And opportunities multiply as they are seized. Um, and we should take advantage of those bidinillahi ta'ala. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, uh, you know, allow us to be ready, as I mentioned, allow us to schedule everything w within our Ramadan and beyond. Um, and allow us to take advantage of the last 10 days of Ramadan and every amazing thing within it. Um, and allow us to complete uh, and celebrate and move forward from Ramadan in the best possible way. Uh, ta'ala. Um, and I think maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reserving some time for me to uh, uh, summarize and conclude. But before I summarize and conclude, um, I, I, I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for allowing me to create this uh, Ramadan series that I hope to continue on year after year, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala. Um, and, you know, since this is the first year that I'm fully creating consistent content, um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continuously make me consistent and steadfast, even if it's little. Um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, to make you amongst those who are not only benefiting themselves, but also benefiting our ummah as well, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala. Um, it takes a lot of hard work, it takes a lot of uh, focus, a lot of energy and effort. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward, reward me, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you, and make dua for me, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to uh, bless us, allows me to stay purely intentioned and utmost sincere, bi'idhinillahi ta'ala, um, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let you do the same and better. Bi'idhinillahi um, ta'ala. What else? I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us plan and prepare effectively and efficiently for everything that we're doing. Um, um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, to allow us to reach Ramadan. I don't, I don't think I can say that enough. Um, allow us to take advantage of it. Allow us to utilize it for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has actually designed it for. Not, you know, binge eating, late night, social media, and everything else that you could imagine. Um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to learn about and continuously follow the footsteps of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant me uh, the necessary guests um, that can, uh, you know, present some of these topics along with me. Um, you know, I've been trying to get a lot of different guests on here and uh, been rejected a lot, disappointed a lot. Uh, but I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing this for a reason. Uh, maybe it was just a, you know, for me to get this going and actually be consistent at it. And, um, you know, if I don't find a guest at all, uh, you know, obviously some guests present themselves and opportunities present themselves. And some guests um, do not. Um, and then some guests that I ask, you know, probably 60 to 80 percent reject. And I don't feel any personal reasons behind that. And I know it's mainly because 
either there's a schedule conflict or they're just afraid of being in front of the camera and um, everything else that you could imagine. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next go round and moving forward to, provi to provide me with qualified, highly beneficial, highly valuable um, uh, um, scholars, students of knowledge and individuals that could benefit um, our Radwanullah family and our Ummah and world bi-idhinillahi ta'ala. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I've made the dua. Um, I think just to kind of reflect on this a little bit, um, let me just get a little bit of water bi-idhinillahi ta'ala. It's amazing how much um, I've underestimated the amount of energy and effort and focus it takes to achieve um, goals and dreams and primarily recording um, uh, these Ridwanullah TV shows for you guys. Um, so I really, really appreciate your love and support throughout the process and the journey. Um, it's slowly but surely growing, um, so I'd love your love and support as well. Um, and just to kind of summarize and conclude this topic in the series, um, it's important to make sure that you're completing your, your Ramadan and finishing off strong um, and making sure that you're celebrating Eid properly, not sinningly and transgressingly and making sure <clears throat> that you, you, realize, you, 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 you become conscious of did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your Ramadan or not and, and you can kind of tell by the way you feel and how you're moving forward with your life ta'ala. Is it in a negative way or in a positive way? Uh, you'll be able to judge that ta'ala, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of and the ultimate judge. Um, and you know just make sure that you understand that if you don't if you don't finish off strong if you don't complete and you don't celebrate properly you're going to be regretting Ramadan and only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows if you will be able to make it to the next one so or or or, or even if we're able to make it to this one that is coming up subhanallah so make sure that you plan and prepare properly make sure that you're taking advantage of it make sure you don't regret Finishing off Ramadan strong and everything else that you do, celebrating properly within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and moving forward in a meaningful way. Um, <clears throat> make sure, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala, that you not only continuously work on taking advantage of this Radwanullah TV show and other shows and so forth and so on, uh, but make sure that you continuously uh, work on your end and uh, spreading your the da'wah and, and spreading the deen in one way or the other, whether you brand it as that or not. Um, you know, everybody in one way or the other is in, is in da'wah, uh, whether you're doing it directly or not. So put your own part to the picture. Um, as I mentioned, um, I'm humbly grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for being allowed to do this Ramadan series for myself and uh, the Radwanullah family. Um, and beyond bi-idhinillahi ta'ala, as well as for our world and ummah. Um, so, you know, jazakallahu khair, if you've watched this from the beginning to end, there was a four-part series. Um, just to kind of recap it, um, we talked about getting ready, meaning planning and preparing properly for Ramadan, uh, scheduling uh, your, your, your goals, um, and, your, and everything else that you have to do, taking advantage of the last 10 days of Ramadan and every amazing things that is within it. And last but not least, the one that we're talking about today, which is uh, completing Ramadan properly and strong um, and um, you know, celebrating Eid within the boundaries, rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, understanding whether your Ramadan has been accepted or not and moving forward in the proper way, bi-idhinillahi ta'ala. <coughs> Um, أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائل المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم وهو البر الكريم. Um, I think I've dragged that long enough and we're almost at the hour. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. I think I could do a lot better in planning and preparing but sometimes uh, you know you don't let perfectionism stop you from executing because there's also value in what you've learned and grown through. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. So within the next six minutes, uh, maybe I'm just going to share some thoughts and ideas and feelings with you guys. 
um, that I particularly probably most likely found to be profound. Um, but um, let's see. Actually, yeah, let me just share with you what I, what, I, what I found on my journey, on my Islamic personal professional development journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the most important thing that I found? And uh, to be quite honest with you, is the concept of the internal and external worlds. Um, and, you know, it's important for us to recognize and realize that uh, the, the world and our reality and everybody is primarily focused on the external world, you know, getting money, getting married, getting school, getting a degree, getting this, getting that, and, you know, buying a house, going on vacation, um, you know, the social media, hey, I'm right here, look at me, and external, but who is internally happy? Who is internally at bliss? And what are the elements of the internal world? We understand primarily the elements of the external world, but what are the elements of the internal world? That is important. Um, and and um, I don't want to, you know, uh, speak ahead of myself, uh, but I think I might be getting one of my dream bucket lists checked off um, in the next couple of months, in Allah Ta'ala. Uh, where I'll be speaking at a TEDx event, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. I've been to two, ta two live ones already, um, and I've co you know, connected with the presenters and the organizers, um, and I think I might be having a wonderful opportunity to be able to speak. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to choose, is the internal and external world. Um, and talking about the, 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 the internal world, and versus the external world and how to go about understanding them and how to go about utilizing them and how to go about maximizing them So um, that's, that's been extremely fascinating to me uh, pretty much all of my life and even more so as I continue to get going uh, because you know even the success gurus say 80% of success is psychology and about 20% is the mechanics um, so you know, the, the psychology and the spirituality is internal, right? And the mechanics and the doing and everything else is external. So that's what I wanted to just share with you, bidhanillahi ta'ala. I'm just fascinated by it, to be quite honest with you. Um, and I'm, that's every single day, that's what the personal professional development is really about. Um, and I think that's what um, the, dis, the, the differentiator for... Uh, our Ridwanullah University is our Islamic personal professional development. Not only do we help you with your external world, more importantly, we help you with, with your internal world. Um, and I've come to, I'll leave this as a teaser, maybe I've already mentioned this to you, but there's only four things in the internal world. There's only four elements. And if you're able to understand these four elements, if you're able to take control of these four elements, if you're able to dominate these four elements for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, then you'll be able to achieve a level of success that you have never imagined. Um, and I was so focused on the mindset, that's part of it, I'll just let you guys know. I was so focused on the mindset that I forgot about the other parts. And the, the most important one is the one that's right here. This is one. This is one, this is, so let's say, this is one, right? Okay? This is one, this is one, and this is one. So those are the four elements of the internal world. And they are uh, amazing. Alhamdulillah, <clears throat> Rabbil Alameen. So, um, just a little bit of teaser. If you guys would like to hear more about it, let me know in the comments below. Uh, make sure that you guys are subscribed. Press the notification bell. Be the nillahi taala, and leave your comments below. Be the nillahi taala. And if you've liked this video, please press the like button. It'll help me get motivated and continue to stay motivated. Be the nillahi taala. And if you know somebody that can take advantage of the last, uh, that can complete their Ramadan properly and strong. Um, celebrate Eid properly, move forward from Ramadan properly, um, then share this video with them. It will really help me. Uh, it will help me grow uh, the Radwanullah organization and channel and everything else. Um, and it will also help them, bi'idhanillahi ta'ala, most importantly. Um, so, jazakumullah khair. Uh, really, really appreciate your love and support. Uh, and make sure that you share it with them. 
Um, and, you know, obviously, if you hated this video and you don't like it, you're one of the one percenters, uh, press the dislike button twice and we'll call it even. Um, I'm going to keep using that as long as I think it's funny. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. That was an empty laugh, but hey, I wasn't ready for it. But anyway, um, yeah. So, Jazakumullah Khair, Ridwanullah family, for tuning in to another episode of Ridwanullah TV. Oh, I forgot to summarize and conclude with the uh, sponsors, announcements, and updates. Um, Jazakumullah Khair to our default sponsor, an ongoing sponsor, and forever sponsor, Ridwanullah organization. Um, we'll do two or three, uh, two more, one or two more sponsors per, per episode on uh, on top of uh, the Radwanullah organization. So please send your request to Radwanullah organization at gmail.com. Send your budget and uh, details to uh, that of your, what your sponsorship will entail. What or if you just want a, spe a brand sponsorship or whatever you would like. Uh, put those details in the comments below and how many of the episodes you would like to have done uh, um, so support the Radwanullah organization Bidhanillah um, and secondly um, what is it uh, oh uh, so Radwanullah University is in the development stages um, I've shifted my mind from focusing on the defense to focusing on offense from being reactive to being proactive. So I'm going to focus on developing the Radwanullah University, which is an online Islamic personal professional development program on a monthly membership basis. Um, so every month we're going to be talking about uh, a particular topic. Um, there's going to be 12, I don't have enough fingers, but just imagine two more here, 12 lessons throughout the year, every year. Uh, and we're, and Two weeks later, we're going to give a coaching and consulting where we're going to talk through a lot of the painful problems and challenges internally and externally to be able to do that. So that is my uh, teaching and training, coaching and consulting online program that I'm developing. So I would love your love and support for that. Uh, price point would roughly be about $30 to $60. Um, and I know that's going to be a lot, but I know the value is minimally 10 times more. Um, so... Uh, with that being said, uh, uh, you know, if anybody wants me to coach and consult them, uh, please send your request at organization at gmail.com. And if you have any speaking engagements for me, uh, put that, put the request details and budget, budget and details, and send that to uh, organization at gmail.com. I'll be changing the email to support at redwanullah.com fairly shortly. Uh, but as of right now, um, is organization at gmail.com, um, and that'll be the default one, and then we'll move forward from there. Um, that's pretty much it. Jazakumullah uh, khair, Radwanullah family, for tuning in to another episode of Radwanullah TV show. I'm your host and maximizer, Hussein Mahmoud, checking out by saying, never ever give up on completely maximizing your life in this dunya, and in the Akhirah, by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.